80% of businesses that are listed on broker sites don't sell. And reason being, brokers are gonna hate us for this, but this is the whole point of this pod, is for the first time ever, here on Unemployable, we are going to be unpacking a business with the entrepreneur that is actually for sale. It's been a labor of love. It's been my sole focus for the last two years. I want to see it succeed. I don't want to hand it over to someone to, to watch them drive it into the ground. I'm not built like that. It's definitely going to be whatever it takes. So it's gone from 253 to 1.53 in one year, which is enormous. That's a, a 5X. You've got zero in inventory. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. How much are you holding in the nah, I don't want to discuss that. <laughs> it, it takes somebody with a bit of brains, a bit of yeah. business experience, and that's what we're going to be looking for Look in the right acquirer. You've got to be super all in. What are the risks in this business? Um, this... Guys, in today's podcast, we have something super, super special for you. For the first time ever, here on Unemployable, we are going to be unpacking a business with the entrepreneur that is actually for sale. This business is quite extraordinary. It has two part-time contractors. It does around a $1.5 million a year with two part-time contractors. The owner, the entrepreneur who built this business works one hour a week. So you could run this literally from anywhere in the world with two contractors. One he pays $7 an hour, the other guy pays $13 an hour, generating $1.5 million a year, and the business is for sale. So I promise you, if you stick around for this pod all the way to the end, you're gonna learn about a really interesting business, how it makes money, where it makes money, and how you can actually buy it. Do not miss this pod. Stick till the end. I promise you it is worth it. Let's get into it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Unemployable Podcast, Australia's fastest growing podcast, as always, completely unregulated, false claim, but we are going to claim it. Maybe we are the fastest growing now, who knows? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Who knows? We're getting some big numbers. How you doing, James? Welcome to the pod. Yeah, mate, I'm tip top. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to this one. It's um, going to be, uh, I think, uh, an absolute rip snorter. We've got a uh, pretty uh, special guest on with a quite a unique um, format today, which I'll let you explain. Yeah, so for those listening, today is... A very unique format we're doing something very very special today that we have not done before and unemployable it is kind of like a test but we think you guys are going to love it uh the the twist i'll tell it to you up front is that we have with us today an entrepreneur from new zealand who has flown in specially for this pod and what is going to be extra cool about this pod is that the business we are talking about is actually for sale right now so we're going to unpack the business we're going to talk about the origin story where it is how much money it's making how he scaled it uh, why he's selling it what he would do to improve it what the risks are and a whole lot more so we're basically going to rip this business apart live on camera with the entrepreneur that created it and if you like the business you can have an opportunity to buy it so um we're really excited to do that so uh richard thank you for coming over mate how are you doing yeah good guys thanks for having me yeah excited to be on the pod finally how does it feel coming here after seeing the pod what's it like to be here in real life uh, it's, as it looks on camera, it's uh, unfortunately not as sunny outside as it as it should be in the Gold Coast, but never mind. <laughs> you must have brought the weather with you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Eric, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. I'm good. I'm excited to see what uh, James has been working on. Finally, he's done a bit of work, so <laughs> see yeah, how James, we go James, with it, eh? James has been driving this one with Richard, getting all this uh, content together. Yeah. So it's yeah. unfortunate you can't read yet, so it's a little, probably, probably wasted <laughs> on you, mate. It's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> thick. It's actually a little bit overwhelming, but... I know, yeah. I know you do good work, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Um, all right. So uh, before we get into it, I just want to sponsor our, sorry, mention our sponsor for today's podcast, which is our friends over at earlybird.ai. Full disclosure, this is a company that we have funded ourselves because we are not credible enough to get real sponsors on this show yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we, are, we have to use our own companies to sponsor it. But in all, all uh, seriousness, uh, uh, early bird AI if you are watching this and you are in business uh, if you have a website that sells anything or you're in business that sells anything product or services and you want to make more money and get more time back these are the people you need to talk to AI is undoubtedly the mega trend of this generation we only get maybe two or three of these in a century the mobile phone the internet and now artificial intelligence it is something of that magnitude 
Uh, and this is a time in history where I think we're going to look back in 10 years and there are going to be these small companies that seemingly overnight blew up into these monster companies because they were very savvy in uh, harnessing AI and using it to grow. It's not about losing employees, it's about repurposing employees to gain massive market share. And AI is the key to that. And what Early Bird AI does is it makes it super simple for anybody that has a business of any kind to have that business audited for free by the team at Early Bird AI. They will jump on, they'll do a 30 minute Zoom with you where they talk about your business and then they'll come back to you with a proposal of the AI tools that they will set up and get operating in your business and hand it back to you with an automated, far more efficient, lower cost, higher profit business than what you had beforehand and to find out if it's right for you it's absolutely free all you need to do is go to earlybird.ai now early is spelt e-a-r-l-i e-a-r-l-i not y earlybird.ai i'm looking at damn man i'll tell you what if you if you quit your day job go straight to global shop direct mate you'll crush it on tv (laughs) honestly it just keeps looking on my chest there you like it that was that was the best uh informational thing i've ever heard (laughs) well I, it's easy to pitch what you believe in. I genuinely yeah, believe yeah, yeah. in it. And yeah. um, I, I think the guys, they're two young guys in their 20s that are straight killers. We've had one of them on the pod before. It's affordable and it actually works. Mm. And look, I, I am an investor in the company. I'm telling you that up front. But Eric and I only invested because we absolutely believe this will serve our audience and help them grow and take market share. That, that's the bottom line. And you can be the own, your own judge of it when you uh, have your audit. Uh, but yes, I do admire your chest, Eric. You know, it's quite a work of art. So I think it's called pit, like the bird sort of matches like pigeon chest. Is that, is that, what, is, is that a pigeon? Yeah, just check it. Uh, gobble, gobble. All right, with that all said, Richard's sitting there going, I can't believe these guys are actually successful. Um, <laughs> with that all said, we're going to jump right in because this is an exciting pod. Um, we're, we're stoked to have you here, Richard. Thank you for making the effort to come over and for agreeing to be a a litmus test and the reason we did this guys was because uh about three weeks ago i um i did a post on my instagram saying hey listen um i need to sell the new zealand rights to my toilets business because it's not practical for me to run from australia for whatever reason there was a bunch of reasons like we have to pull the batteries out before we ship the products to new zealand really people want need to have the supplies in country in new zealand because we sell sanitary products so when you run out of those things you need them quickly you don't want to wait for international freight so we've done a pod on dry flush toilets where i unpacked everything about the business the pod went crazy we got comments from all over the world so a few weeks later i thought you know what i'm just going to try and find somebody to buy the rights to new zealand and run that i did two posts on my instagram and then i had uh, and i said look you need 100 grand it's a startup, so it's got no revenue. You need 100 grand and you need to live in New Zealand. And I thought, I'll, I'll maybe get two or three people because New Zealand's quite small and you did need money up front. I had 24 applications in 48 hours of entrepreneurs that watched the pod uh, or people that want to become entrepreneurs and said, I would much, much rather do that where I'm buying a business that has proven product market fit, all the groundwork of uh, the website, because for that they got the website and half of that 100 grand was for inventory and different things. Um, but, But we know it works, it's already running. So there's a lot to be said for acquiring a business as opposed to bootstrapping all the risk in, in entrepreneurship is pretty much in finding product market fit. Will this work? This business today that we're talking to with uh, Richard is a seven figure business uh, with a six figure profit and a three year trading history. So it's a fantastic de-risked type of starting point. And James, maybe you wanna comment on this because you're the acquisitions guy. This is what you're all about. You're like, why take on the risk of starting a company when you can buy one? Yeah, well, especially in this case here, it's um, it's got all the hallmarks of a great business for um, uh, when it um, comes to you know, z- z- pretty much zero overhead, other than some offshore stuff, which we'll get into. Uh, not holding any stock, which is usually one of the the big uh, drawbacks for uh, any e-commerce business, um, and um, you know it can be around from anywhere. So it's it's got a uh, with, it, it, again with a three-year trading history, uh, and when we dig into it a little bit um, further, uh, we'll look at some of the nuances of where the business has been. Uh, some of the investment that's been made that's right for the picking for the potential acquirer as well. So it's going to be a saucy, uh, saucy session. So I think... Um, I, I mean, just to interject, I actually was interested in buying this for my son 
when I first looked at it. And the only reason that um, that it's here and not in my position right now is because um, I wanted him to have a bit more business experience before taking something like this on. And I personally don't have enough time to mentor him directly. So I, th I think it needs to be set up front. Preferably, this would be good for somebody who's got a, would you Richard agree yeah, with that? No, We're going to show you the business in a minute guys so just hang yeah, tight. Yeah it's not a it's not a, a beginner's business that's for sure it, it takes a little bit of uh, experience and, and now to run I mean it's not it's not rocket science of course but it, it, it is not a starter yeah. business in my, in my so opinion. It takes somebody with a bit of brains a bit of yeah. business experience and that's what we're going to be looking for Look, in it, the right acquirer. It could be done but you don't want us to spend time learning this business you want to well, I mean, you, you're obviously going to have to, but you need to jump in and, and take it to where it's going to go. I was the same. The guy that bought the dry flush rights is already doing $3 million online in New Zealand, and that was hugely attractive to me for those reasons. He already has a base to go from. Yeah, Correct. so without further ado, I think um, um, if you can explain your own words, just the overview about My, ne My Neon Store, mm -hmm. when it was founded, who was involved, um, some of the clients you've had, yep. uh, which are quite, uh, quite some quite profile clients, um, and just a bit more about the, the model in general, and, um, and then from there we can start to... Um, James, just to interject, why don't we start with the website? Totally. Throw, because I think putting the website up, people are going to see what the product is. Sure. And then we'll dive into the backstory. So if you could just bring that up, Greg. So here it is. It is a pretty good looking website, to, um, in my opinion. It's myneonstore.com. If you're listening on Spotify or uh, one of the audio uh, channels, myneonstore.com. And I also want to say right up front, we're recording this right now in early March 2024. So if you're listening to this in early March 2026, it's probably sold by now. Um, so just keep that <laughs> in mind. Let's hope so. So myneonstore.com, here it is. So um, it's buy your space, create your own or upload a design. So you're basically making custom and I, I imagine some off the shelf neon signs. Let's scroll down, That's Greg, fine. and just have a bit of a look. Um, and this is a full drop shipping business. So when people buy from this website, you collect the money and then the order gets routed straight out to the, uh, a manufacturer in China, and the Chinese manufacturer ships it directly to your customer. Keep scrolling, Greg. Is that about right, Greg? Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Richard. Yes, that's right, yeah. So, yeah, so my noun was started about three years ago, as you say, by a, a young, very talented young man in, in New Zealand while he was at uni, um, and it was a, a side hustle for probably six months until he, he graduated, and then, he started to to focus on the business a little bit more and, and, and scaled it big time over the over the couple of months. Um, at which point he, he wanted to go offshore and, and and start a career in something else and grow some real world experience before um, getting back into business. So he put it on on the market and um, we found it looked kind of like that, but probably not as sharp when we got it. Um, and and we jumped on board with him and and uh, we were strategic enough to to offer him. Uh, a small portion to, to stay with us solely because he knew the business inside and out um, and I see he's a very clever young man so um, once this business sells I, I definitely want to get back into business with him again sometime in the future so yeah. that's basically where it started um, and over the, over the last two years we've um, invested heavily in bits and pieces to try and bring it up to 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 spec where it is today um, and yeah, that's basically the, the, the initial story. Um, with that then, just if you, Greg, if you can scroll back up again, just um, with um, uh, this business, if you just stole there, just look at brands that trust us. You've got Amazon, you've got Fox News, you've got Hilton, you've got Tesla. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you acquired those clients, how they came to um, be coming across um, My Neon. Yeah, there's no real secret. They, they just um, come across us on a, on a Google search and, and, and reach out. And uh, we've done quite a few bulk orders as well, which I, I probably haven't mentioned to you. Um, a, a couple of companies have come in and, and you, you know, in, the, in America where our, our main market is, there's franchises with hundreds of, of outlets. So we get quite often uh, inquiries on, on bulk orders for those sorts of things. Um, but uh, we did a huge one for Gutfield, you can see there for Fox News. Um, it was 15 foot. If you, if you go and look on, on their website, you'll see it on the, on the web page and um, right above their, their stage. Um, Amazon, yep. Pinterest, we've done, done them all. That's remarkable. And in terms of volume, you, last year you did one around 1,890 signs. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Last year. Yep. And the market is mostly in America. So you're living in New Zealand with two Filipino staff who are contractors, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's it. Okay. And, and you're um, marketing in America, making in China, 
and delivering directly from China to your customers across the United States. And I think you said off camera about 5% of your orders are going out to Canada. That's right. But otherwise, that's it. And revenues, we're going to go through this in a bit more detail, but revenues are roughly around that one and a half million uh, dollars. New Zealand dollars, yeah. New Zealand yeah. dollars, which yeah. is so, sort of I like mean, Australian dollars. Yeah, we operate in, in US dollars, obviously, in the US market. So 1.1, 1.2 million US is, US is our average turnover year. Yeah, and we'll go through the numbers in more detail in mm -hmm. a moment. But overall, the site alone is beautiful. Uh, I've got to say, I'm very impressed with the site. Um, I'm currently doing a, a rebuild for Dry Flush right now. And I don't know what you paid to have that built. We just signed a contract for 23 grand for just the website mm -hmm. rebuild. Um, so it's it's not cheap to get a Shopify site dialed and delivered at a high level. Yeah. This has been a work work in progress for the last probably year. We, we keep adding to it and we, we, we engaged the CRO um, firm, so they went right through it with a fine tooth comb and, and helped us um, analyse what, what was working and what wasn't, what we needed to change and what, what we didn't, and, and uh, that's what we've come up with so far. It's still a work in process, in progress. We're still, I'm still working on it. You know, once a month I'll have a look at it. A CRO for, for listeners, conversion rate optimization. Yeah. So it means how do you get the site to convert more by the colour of the buttons, placement of the calls to action, that yep. sort of stuff. Yep, split it, testing, all sorts of things. And just for the viewers as well, this is built on Shopify, it's just Shopify, for yeah. clarity. Yeah. 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 How much would you have invested in the website, you think, over the years? The website um, was already running, as I said, when, when we bought it, obviously, but um, I can't put a figure on it. It's, yeah. I've done a lot of it myself, really, yeah. um, with the guidance of, of the CRO yeah. guys. Good on you. Um, so they, Shopify makes it quite easy, these days, I find, to, to, to do what you need to do. And also AI. Yeah. AI is a lot. Just a lot of time. I mean, when I look at that, there's a lot of creative there. Like when you're starting out, getting that level of creative, like that good vibes photo that's up there and the other examples there, uh, you've done a really nice job. Let, the, let, let, let's go ahead. The video that's uh, it's, uh, the hero image there is, uh, is something that, that uh, that's my son. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it's been a, a big work in progress and uh, you're quite proud of it. Yeah, you should be. It's, it looks sick. Hmm. Um, just clip over if you can, Greg, to the... Uh, to the uh, Instagram account as well. Now these are real followers, there's no bullshit followers here. So three and a half thousand followers. Now in the world of Instagram, people go, oh, that's not that much. But if you line three and a half thousand people up or put them in a footy field, it's a lot of people um, that are following. I mean, it's a, it's a small business, right? So it's, it's a really good result there. And again, you can see, uh, you know, some UGC, user generated content, I'm imagining. People yep. have got their signs and you're posting it up there. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a very visual product, so Instagram is very important. Um, something I, I definitely do not spend enough time on. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, TikTok, and that not that, that sort of thing, but um, definitely needs a, a bigger investment from from a potential buyer. Um, you get a lot of traction, a lot of lot of interest from from a, a post if it lands right. If you get the creative right, I actually yeah. follow a neon sign business on Instagram because their ads were so funky that I was like, oh, look at this, like really cool. It's a cool looking product. Yeah. Which is good. All right, great. So the, the overview is you acquired the business from a young university student, 20 years old. You retained him at, I think it was 10%, 10, 10 ownership. So it's you and your wife, wife yep. and the original owner for 10%. So I guess the, 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 um, the first question that everyone wants to know is uh, why are you selling the business? Um, I have acquired a, another business, which um, is probably more down my my skill set so i'm i'm i've done all the hard work here and i'm looking to offload it so i can focus on the new venture mm. and so you've had it now for how long uh two and a half years two and a half years yeah okay cool um and and your what's your background prior to that like what's your entrepreneurial journey um entrepreneurial i actually did your course adam yep um uh it would have been back in 2021 um developed a product on on amazon which i've just had patented actually which is which is quite good i still sell today um, and I have done a lot of real estate development. Um, I started, I actually worked on super yachts for, for about 12 years and, and got to rub shoulders with some, some pretty high net worth individuals, which, which um, quickly made me see that uh, working for, for a wage was not for me. Um, so since then, I was you know, looking for the next thing to do and um, real estate was, was an easy thing for me with my background. Um, then, then the neon thing came along. Just, just browsing on on Trade Me, which is your like Gumtree um, type site, and uh, yeah, it went down that route, and and here I am today. Right, your best month to date is one hundred and thirty thousand US um, average monthly 
uh, revenue of about 91,000 US is where you're right. at today. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, James, questions? Yeah, so um, we've now understood the background. We've seen the site. Um, looks amazing. Um, primary source of uh, revenue. Um, how do you drive in traffic to the site and, and um, sort of mon- monthly ad spend uh, and um, conversion rates? Not to go down just the, the headline numbers. Would be yeah, great. sure. So it's all, it's all Google Ad at the moment. Um, Google Ads, uh, a, lot, a lot of organic, but the main, the main driver is Google Ads. We do advertise a little bit on, on um, Facebook and Instagram, but it's mainly retargeting customers that have already been to the site. So it's intentional search. People who type in neon sign companies, Nevada Correct. or wherever they are in the US yep. mostly. Yep. And how much are you spending on ads? Right now we're spending about uh, th- between three to 5,000 a week on ads. Um, U- US or? US. US, three yep, to 5,000 US for a return of 91,000 on average US. We'll look at the numbers in a bit more detail, yeah. but around that 100,000. Yeah, that's right. We have been, um, we have been up much higher than that. Uh, and, and obviously with, with Google Ads, it's scalable. So it, it, once you've got it streamlined, you just need to uh, double down and, and, and increase the spin and, and hopefully the, the traffic follows. And, and just so um, for the listeners as well, you're spending three to five grand US, you're $91,000 return. So the railways is pretty solid. Um, and it's a, a friction, well, human frictionless sales process. In other words, there's not a salesperson involved in the transaction. They generally they drive traffic to the site, they p- p- submit their inquiry or their, their for a quote, uh, and then what happens from there? Just so we can get an understanding that maybe, yeah, maybe so, we go to the site hey, and have a look at that. Yeah, like, let's have a look at the customer journey. So, are they landing on the homepage? They're landing on the homepage. So we'll take a step back. So we sell two types of sign. One is a is a custom logo, like a business, for, for example, unemployable might come along and, and want their logo turned into a neon so that's what we call a custom sign but we also have a text-based sign so you might want um uh adam you might want live laugh live life love or something like that right and um you could go onto our our uh, app which you can type in whatever you want to say you can change the font the color the size add waterproofing um select which remote you want so that that's fully automated and, and requires no human intervention but the the custom side uh which is probably uh, 65% of our, our sales uh, requires a little bit more human intervention. So did you say um, download the app? Like look at No, it. sorry, it's not. It's a, it's it's a, a website. It's a Shopify app. So it's yeah, yeah, a, in the back end yeah, of website. That's right. yeah, nice. Okay, so the customer comes in here. They either want their own logo uh, turned into a neon sign or they're looking for a phrase that just needs to be in whatever font they select. Yeah. And then they can immediate, immediately see that phrase in a variety of and it fonts. And it updates live the price um, as, you, as you type and as you change your font, yeah. as you change your size. Wow. Uh, okay. There it is. There it is. Yeah. And have, you've obviously created this formula in the back end. Yep. So it's your own IP. Uh, sorry, this is an app that, yep. that's available on, on, the, on the Shopify app store, yep. but it's fully customizable. So they're our fonts, they're our, um, our parameters and everything. So okay. I think um, where we, in the research here, Eric, what you're going to is um, you've actually designed some IP when it comes to the calculation for the pricing. Yes, And, and that, that's a... That's a um, yeah, so if we, if, we, if we went out of here and we went to the, the Get a Quote tab or Upload a Design. Upload Designs. Yep. You're taken to a, a paper form. And in here, you can fill in your, your details and your requirements and upload your, your file. So say, for example, you guys uploaded your, your logo. Mm-hmm. We would then take that, um, the boys would take that and strip it down and create a vector file from it. And from then, we can calculate the length of neon required and the overall dimensions of the sign, which is the two factors we need for, for pricing. And the, this is the calculator you're talking about, which, which um, all that data would be input into, and it spits out a, a price. Um, and then tells us the price breakdown. And that, um, that allows us to get our COGS within one or two percent. You know, it's obviously ranges vastly with the custom sign, but generally they're, they're within one or two percent. Depends on how many letters, I suppose, and all those types of things. Yep. And, and, and COGS. The, thic- the thickness of neon, uh, we also do uh, RGB, which is a color changing, and we do a uh, full spectrum, which is um, thousands of little individual LEDs that can change color independently of the next one so it's, mm. it gives like a flow effect that, that's a that's a massive um uh, piece right there because the major constraint with any of these businesses that are doing a, a custom or bespoke product is always going to be pricing mm. and if you've got that automated i mean it's yeah. um, it's literally taking us hundreds of hours to get, to yeah. get it right yeah imagine. so i'm quite proud of that yeah so so the customer puts in their first name their last name their email their phone they give us a bit of a description they upload the size and so that then goes through to one of your team correct who then uses the calculator 
And they do a render, is yep. that right? They do a, a lifelike render. A lifelike and render. And they attach it to a PDF, which has all our uh, information about our products, um, uh, different colors and you know, different sizing options and, and what comes with the package and um, a little bit about the warranty and that sort of thing. So that I see is like kind of interesting because that's an opportunity to differentiate there is in the experience that they get through the site, through the engagement. 100%, yeah. 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 Because I suppose with a product like this, one of the risks are uh, differentiation because I imagine you're buying from a factory in China and lots of other drop shippers can do the exact same thing. So the differentiation is in the experience, the speed. Is that about That's right? right. The, the experience, the, the speed is a big thing for us. Yep. We find the faster you can reply to a quote, the the more likely you, you are to close that deal. What, what is the turnaround time on average with so that, like an SLA, if you will? So with the customer base being in the States and our designers being in the Philippines, um, I've got them working from uh, 3 o'clock in the morning so that they catch more of the, the American business day. So a typical time frame, I try not to let it go longer than an hour, but, but sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a bit longer than that. It depends how busy we are, of course. This well, is where AI could probably help you a lot, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's why it's, it's interesting with the timing of, of you dropping early bird. Um, I'm always on the lookout for something that will speed that process up. Probably takes about half an hour per, per logo. If it's, uh, you know, some, some take longer, of course, and some are a lot more basic. But if we could find something that took uh, took a PDF, for example, and turned it into a vector instantly, then it would just make things so much so much faster, so much easier to convert. One of the headline metrics I see with this type of site, because there's a no human touch point to it, uh, well, within the, the quote going back, there's no phone person intermediary in there at all. From someone who fills out and presses submit on here, what's the conversion rate into a paid customer? Because that's a pretty headline stat. It's, it's, we try to go for 20%. We've been as high as 30 Um and, and obviously, as soon as you get up in the high 20s, it, it becomes a, a bit of a different beast in terms of the business. But um, trying to keep above that 20% is, is something that we need to strive for. What, what we don't do and what I have tested through Black Friday is actually ringing a customer as soon as they've submitted. As soon as we've replied to them, I'll ring them and say, hey, listen, I'm Richard, the director. They normally make some comment about my accent and then... Um, yeah, you just start the dialogue and it, and it seems to work a lot more. Um, and, and I think going forward, that would be a good avenue to go down. It's not hard. How, no. how many of these are you getting a day, roughly? Um, it, it, that varies as well, Adam. Um, anywhere from, from 15 inquiries a day up to 40. Wow. Yeah. And, and so here comes that um, point when you go from um, you know, online to a uh, model where you can aff afford to have a salesperson. What's the average order value uh, for the more expensive product? US dollars um, between 550 and 650. And the length of phone call time on phone? <laughs> and, and your conversion rate? Like um, you can go with it? Length of, length of time on call is 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. And, and you'd probably double your chances, I reckon. Right. So there's a huge opportunity. We found, we found that with Dry Flush. Whenever we actually talk to a customer yeah. who inquires, totally. that they love it. Like it's a, an AI again can help with that now. Um, yeah, totally. With, with air, air, air AI. And it's yeah. a whole bunch of tools. It just, it just it verifies that you're, you're a real business and you. So yeah. I, I, just, I just did the numbers there. You're, you're selling, based on this 1800 a year, roughly five signs a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. Yep. It's amazing. And yep. if you were to put a, someone on the phone, a phone blower, and have a train them up in a 30-second 30 to, 30 to a minute, call it five-minute conversation on the 15 or uh, however many inquiries, you could pretty much double the business overnight by having someone on minimum wage and commission. Yep. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, so just, just out there, if you're, no, it's interesting. If, if you're listening out there, guys, this is well, why we have done this podcast. You've got a motivated seller. You understand why he's selling because he's got another business he's more interested in. And as we pull it back the onion layer here, opportunity is just abundant how to double the business by having someone uh, in in a, in a heartbeat on the on this project, so um, yeah, low this is what fruit. James does, right? Pretty like much. Your, your James looks for you know fax machine businesses or businesses with low hanging fruit where you can improve things, but that that's certainly something that could be tested um, to see. What do you see um, like if you were to wind the clock back? Because when I look at you, I see a guy that was like you came in, you bought like you, I'm just guessing here, right? So call me if I'm wrong, but you're like, okay, this looks like a good opportunity, but the, um, the Richard of three years ago is different to the one that's sitting in front of us today. Yes, like, definitely. You're right. So now you've yep. got three years under, the, under your feet. Mm -hmm. You're like, now I'm onto a bigger thing. But if you had that enthusiasm for the business now that you had when you first came in, what do you see in bullet point form of the things? Like with Dry Flash, I said the number one thing is our website sucks. 
That's number one. Number two, we need to be at trade shows and in front of the audiences there. Uh, you know, there's like four things there. What What are those four things or three things, or whatever you would do if you were going to do it again? I would go with um, Facebook and Instagram marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, of an of a competitor who spends fifty percent uh, split between Facebook and Instagram and Google. Mm -hmm. We spend maybe a hundred and fifty bucks a week on on, on wow. Facebook and Instagram. Um, so there's a huge scope there. I think uh, our sessions last year were. Um, I might get this wrong. Um, 175,000 sessions, and I think 5,000 came from Facebook. Right. So, so there's a huge scope there. Um, obviously, being a, a, a visually uh, impressive product, it leads itself to to creative ads and videos and whatnot. So, that's definitely somewhere where, where I would yeah. explore first. Even TikTok, eh? Like this would be massive yeah. on TikTok. Yeah, it's a very visual product. I think I think it's right. And and as I said, I follow a, a neon sign on because I just like their ads mm. so much. And I suppose you got that sort of you're selling to businesses. I mean, you look around Australia at the markets, these or anywhere actually now, neon's quite trendy, and YouTubers have all got neon signs behind 100%, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. We sell a lot of a lot of uh, signs to to YouTubers, and quite often get questions like, um, "How do you eliminate the flicker behind a, a behind a set?" Um, so, so that's just, just number one. So that was number one. I might just elaborate on number one. Um, again, low-hanging fruit. It's a very visual uh, product, and you're not running ads on Instagram where the people are with the ads. So guys out there, a little bit of low-hanging fruit yet again. Um, well, to be tested, right? To be, like, to be tested. You, you have to be tested. And the key to this, in my experience, and Eric, you would know this, is you've got it. If, you, if this is something you're going to test, or you or the incoming buyer, mm -hmm. my advice on this is you need really good creative. That doesn't mean expensive creative, but think about like High Smile and how well they do that kind of advertising. Yep. It's so demonstrative and it's often not complex, but it's engaging. So you really, it's a science and you have to get really good at that science. But I tend to agree, in my opinion, there's probably money to be made there, but you've got to do the work. Correct. Well, and I, and if, if looking at the website, the quality of the, of the actual Christmas of the website there, I think you probably have to be in line with that, if not. It has to be in line with that, but the other thing about it is it's it's consistent because creative burns out mm. so what i mean by that is an ad that works now might only work for a week before like it's been seen and they need another piece of creative you need user generated content like where people go hey guys i'm just doing my unboxing of my neon sign for, uh, from my neon store you know check yep. this out that makes a great ad but only for about a week or two yep. and then you need more so it is a commitment to master that um, and uh, you, you shouldn't be under any illusions about the skill that's involved. Uh, you, you were going to say something. I, I dabbled into um, larger scale Facebook ads when I first took over, but what threw me off was the attribution. I found quite hard with Facebook and, and Instagram. I, I couldn't put my, you know, I couldn't say that, that that lead came from Facebook and Instagram. It was too hard, but that's all changed now. Mm. It's a lot easier. So um, something that I should have explored again six months ago but um well you, you mentioned a tool off camera that, that that solved that what was that tool was there a tool um, or was it an intermediary software yeah we're looking at a couple at the moment one's called we tracked um we I, to be honest um, business partners looking through that so I'm, I'm not across that fully but we tracked is the one, one tracked we tracked correct yeah. yeah and who's running your ads at the moment like at the Google moment ads? The, my business partner's running it and out of 10 what, what would you say he is like in regards to experience on, on something like that versus like an ad agency? Uh, we've, we've been down the ad agency path yep. um, and he's doing a better job now solely because he's got his, his skin in the game. So he, yep. he, he will be there at 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday buying media for the week. So, you okay. know, you don't get that from a from an agency. Yep. So he's, he's, he's really doing really well. We've, we've spent hundreds of hours trying to streamline this thing and, and we, we feel like we're at, at the point now where it's, where it's working and, and, and it just needs the tap to be turned on. And uh, most of your ads, just to confirm, so 95% of the sales, say, coming from the US, 5% in Canada, no spend in Australia? No. Not one cent? No. Okay. It, the, when I bought the business, it was, it was all in America, and I just saw a huge market. You know, I don't know how many Americans are there, 350 million, something like that, versus um, the rest of the world. I mean, so I just focused on what was there, but... In hindsight, I should have branched out and come but to it would easier be, markets like Australia. Yeah, it would be a massive competition. Massive yeah, competitive competitive market, massive. massive. Yeah. You were saying off camera um, that there's a competitor in Australia in this space and they're doing 5 million estimated. You don't yeah. know. But yeah, if, if, you were, if you were to throw a dart and guess, you're saying easily 5 million. Plus 5 million, I'd say. Just in Australia. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge market in Australia if you can 
tap it. And it's like Amazon. When we teach people Amazon, I said for years, well, as soon as Amazon came, it's going to be like shooting fish in a barrel here compared to America. And now all my students say they all launch on Amazon Australia first because they can just get so much more traction yeah. I, and market share. I think your cost, cost per acquisition would be half here than what it is in America. Yeah. Obviously, the volume wouldn't be as much, but still, there's, again, another low-hanging fruit, isn't it? <laughs> totally. That being said, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with a one in five conversion from your site. Mm. That's 20% conversion. That's surprising to me. That's that's high. From from the competition, it's, yeah, we... But I, but I imagine it's because your lead source, like with Dry Flush, we only do PPC with Google because it's so intentional. It's not yeah. like you can interrupt somebody on social media and go, hey, you want to spend two grand on a toilet? Yeah, it doesn't work, does it? doesn't work. But this product, what's the average order value? So between 550 and 650 US. Oh, it's not cheap. But we're, it, it, sometimes it goes up to... Two thousand, three thousand US dollars. It's quite often we sell we sell really expensive signs. I got a, a another question in regards to the customer. So, have you worked out B two C and B two B in regards to sales? So, if you're doing, you know, As one point, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say ninety um, percent of the custom signs we sell are, are to businesses. So, if you took that and the the split I mentioned before, sixty five percent business. And, oh, sorry, sixty five percent custom signs to to the rest at, uh, wow. at tech space science. So a lot of B2B. Yeah, yeah. I've just done the calcs there. <laughs> Should have done it before. 1,800 orders, 1. 1.5 million in sales roughly. It's about $800 per order on average, which for those of you who know me know that I love things. <laughs> high ticket. I, high I don't ticket. like $80 things. I don't like $50 things. I like things in the hundreds or in the thousands because you have that gross dollar margin to advertise. Yep. So you've, you've got about an 800 kiwi or aussie dollar average transaction is there anything like you could do to increase that average order volume like yeah so i tried um we have a expedited option actually we've got two expedited options so standard standard shipping is free comes with the the purchase price then you've got a uh, two-week turnaround which is a faster uh faster option and we sell that for 49 us dollars mm -hmm. and then we've got a super expedited option which is uh, 99 dollars and that guarantee well it doesn't guarantee but it says you'll you'll get your sign within eight days and 99 times out of 100, we get that we get that right, and that costs no extra to us. So, what was the last one? It's super expedited. Okay. Uh, and it's it's 99 okay. US dollars, right. which costs us nothing. Yeah, oh, just on that, there is there a warranty, or you can upsell extended warranty as well? Yeah. So we have a two year warranty as standard. Uh -huh. um, during during Black Friday and the, the sale months, I actually beefed that up to three years. Mm -hmm. um, just as an added thing over our competitors. But yeah, it's, it's two years. Two so years you could offer warranty. potentially a five-year extended yep. warranty. Mm -hmm. yep. And I also wonder whether you could do like the old Vista print or Crazy Domains who are the most annoying people to buy off because they ask you to buy freaking 30 things before they <laughs> let you go to the checkout. Yeah. Would you like a pen with that logo printed on it? Would you like a diary? But I imagine there might be some other things that if you put your mind to it, you could potentially... Now that you've got the design, would you like an acrylic printed version for just one ninety nine or something? I don't know. There's probably other things that you yeah, might. A travel to. case is something we get asked about a lot. A travel case. Yeah. So I, we sell to a lot of guys that do trade shows. Okay. So they want something to put their sign in after the trade show to fly to the next one. There you go. Um, so uh, it's sort of a pelican case type thing. Would 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 definitely. Go, yeah. I think. So there's probably things that you could do yep. to just bump that AOV up, which would just give you a contribution, even if it's. Fifty dollars mm. on uh, across all of it. If it's a high product, a profit thing. If it's adding fifty dollars in actual profit to the to each order, it digs right into that cost of acquisition. acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. Something I might add there. So you're sending a package to a customer. It doesn't cost much extra to put one more sign in there because mm. shipping's our biggest cost. So so something that I, I have tried a little bit, but needs more more testing, more more focus is is actually selling a second sign. Correct for. 30% discount, 40% discount. Yeah. You'll still you'll still make the margin. Yep. A second one, a smaller one, a one yep. in another color. And you just put it in the same package. An acrylic one that's a lower cost but might be able to put it in the office. But, you know, the one mm. that, the, you know, I just, my mind sort of immediately goes to what else could we just bump it up a little. Yeah. The, just with that B2B, I can't believe the amount of B2B sales for some versus B2C. I'm thinking this going, oh, it's B2C, B2C, no, but no, the amount no, B2B. of B2B. So mm. anything on LinkedIn, B2B targeting? No. Nothing. Okay. So number one was uh, low-hanging fruit was? Was was Meta. Meta. Go to Meta, uh, Instagram, Facebook, basically. Number two, is there anything else that's a second behind that? 
that you would do if you had the energy and would it be going to influences or is there something yeah, else? Yeah, it'd be would influencer, be... but it would probably be um, the, the phone conversation that we were talking about, James, mm. um, ringing the customer straight after a, after a, a submission's been made. Um, and it would be, uh, it would be a, maybe not a physical store, but it would be, um, it would be having sales reps going out to places. Mm. That's something that, that I haven't looked at at all because I, I, I wanted to keep this thing lean and, and just me and the, and, the, and the VAs. So it's something I didn't look at, but, but having a salesman on the, on the ground, wherever, you, wherever that may be, yeah, I think. There's another lever in there as well. Is instead of spending three to five grand, it's been six to 10. Yeah, 30 to 40. Yeah, exactly. Is it's, there anything it, it, There's obviously not stopping you. If there's, no. if there's sign companies in Australia doing five million in this space, there'll be sign company in America doing 50 million in this space. So the, the, there's got to be upside. The there. only reason we haven't done it is because I didn't think we had it streamlined enough, whereas ah, now we do. Okay. So it's completely the wrong timing to be getting out of this, but hey. Yeah. And okay. talk, talking about streamlining, um, just if we can, from that, that point of ops, you've got two guys that are in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They will start at 3 a.m. They turn the orders around and they do admin. Is that what's explained? Yeah, so well? I've got I've got two two um, gentlemen in the in the Philippines. Um, Zedric, it's a funny story about him. So uh, when I first took over the business, uh, Michael was doing everything. So he was doing the designing, he was doing the quoting, using Adobe Illustrator, which I had no no idea about. So when I took over, he said I'd been vetting this guy Zedric. He seems alright. So um, I took him on straight away, and he was fantastic. Two days into the to me running the business, he went cold. I couldn't couldn't get hold of him. Couldn't raise him on email, Slack, nothing. So about three days later, he so then I'm in a flat spin. I'm trying to do everything all at once. Trying to learn the business. Trying to design. Trying to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator. And it turns out a, a typhoon had gone through his village, wiped out all the all the power, all the water, everything. Um, and he'd taken a ferry over to another island to check into a hotel to get hold of me. So uh, first thing I did was was buy him a generator. And uh, he took that home to his village, and I'm sure everyone was charging their iPhones and everything off it. But but he was able to work, and 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 from that day, he's he's been so loyal to me, and he's a really big part of the business. So um, so I'm happy to have him. And uh, so anyway, so he he's um, taken over from what I've been doing in the day to day running. He looks after everything, and then I have a, another guy called Jun who who is a sole designer. So he he takes care of all the quoting and um, and customer liaison and that sort of thing. How, how, much, how much are you paying these guys? I'm paying uh, Zedric $13 US an hour, um, which is reflective of his responsibility, uh, and, and John gets seven. And as, as far as capacity for those two guys? Um, I'd say Zedric's at capacity. He does 60 hours a week every week. I think he's might have maybe taken five days off the whole, I, I tell him, you know, take a day off. No, no, sir, I wanna keep working. So he's, he's been really good. Um, and, and John is sort of about 25, 30 hours a week. So he's got scope. Um, but I have used other freelancers in the past that just come in when we're busy. Um, so you're saying 25 hours a week, $7 an hour. Wow. Yep. And uh, So $140 a week. Yeah. yeah. Now the most important question, how many hours a week are you working? <laughs> I do about an hour a week on the business at the moment. Uh, at the moment. Yep. But yep. how about when you first bought it? When I first bought it, I was doing uh, easy 40, 50 hours, as you do as a, as a young, um, motivated entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, basically those two guys are running the business. Yep. And, and I, Zedric could run the business himself. He could own the business. So it's unfortunate I can't, I can't sell it to him, but yeah, he's, yep. he's all over it. Why don't we jump into the numbers? I think, yeah. I think that's what we want to do. Um, Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about the overarching journey because this, it, it's really good when you go. And, and look, for those of you interested in this business, um, what the process is going to be is we are going to accept... Uh, applications up until Friday the 29th of March okay so Friday the 29th of March 2024 um, and the process is you send an email to deals which is d-e-a-l-s at unemployable.com.au deals at unemployable.com.au they're going to funnel down to Jay uh, Denham over here Mr. James Denham and uh, James will take you through the process but that's going to give you access to what we call a data room so for most people, they haven't been through this process before, but a data room enables you to go inside, you'll sign a non-disclosure agreement, you'll get all the information on the business, the full financials and so on. And then once you've gone through that, you'll have to put a, a you know, indicative offer forward and then James and the team will um, you know, uh, respond to those in priority of um, uh, order. And we'll come back to that at the end. So that's mm -hmm. just so you understand, we're just gonna go high level on the financials right now. 
but they do tell a really interesting story. So 2021, 2022 uh, was basically when you got started, uh, 253,000. This is all New Zealand or Aussie roughly dollars, correct? New Zealand, yes, correct. New Zealand dollars, Aussie pesos, about the same. So quarter of a million dollars in revenue, uh, gross profit, which is 56.93, so let's call it 57% gross profit with a net, that means before operating expenses and, and so on, uh, but the cost of goods have been paid for there, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then out of that, you've got your advertising and cost to run the business, which brings you down to your net profit. So the net profit in that first year was 67,000, give or take, a little bit over, which is a net profit of 26.5% first year. Second year, um, trading income of 1.5, a little bit more, 1.53. So it's gone from 253 to 1.53 in one year. Uh, which is enormous, that's a a 5x sort of thing, which is terrific. Gross margin of 52%, so just slightly less gross margin, Um, and a net profit of 173, uh, so 174 uh, net profit, 174,000 net profit, Um, and that represents a net profit of 11.3. So in the first year, the net profit was 26% Mm -hmm. on lower turnover, the next year it was 11.3% on higher turnover. And then the next year is where you went and invested a bunch of money um, into SEO because I, I figured the mentality probably was, we've got a real business here. We should invest into technology. We should invest into SEO. And so what happened in that next year is you did 1.6 million. So you grew a little bit. Your operating expenses uh, were up uh, substantially in that year. Um, and you netted uh, 100,000, a little over 100,000. So. Uh, the previous year you netted 173, you pulled it back to 100, but you invested a bunch of money into the business that year. Um, and your net profit was only 6%, which is not super appealing for anyone buying a business, but that's because you loaded costs in there. And now for the last couple of months, you've taken the uh, foot off those investments now that they're done for the year. And so for Feb- January, February this year, the first two trading months of the year, um, you've done trading income of 127,000, uh, with a gross margin of 65%, which is the highest that you've uh, mm-hmm. done so far, and a net profit of 28000 over those uh, two months, which is roughly $15,000 a month uh, profit at the moment, which if it continues along those lines, is going to put you at about one eighty. Yeah. Is that right? And yep. it's a net, net, net profit here at um, just under 23%. So it's starting to mirror back to when you first started. 23% which is now, this year, so far. After you've so Talk us through um, that... Uh, trailing 12 months for that from the year when it had probably the least amount of net profit what did you what seeds did you plant or what investments did you make back into the business um, for you know perceived uh, future growth yeah so we went down the the SEO route we, we felt like we had a genuine business as you say Adam uh, the website was as it is we thought it was impressive and we thought uh, we need to start working on our organic traffic um, paid traffic was was working but it wasn't it wasn't as good as we'd, we'd hoped. So we spent a lot of money on, on, on SEO and we got our organic ranking right up. So um, that took that takes time. Um, it takes a lot of time actually and it's still an ongoing process. So there was a, a big investment in that. We also spent a lot on um, CRO, as I said before, conversion rate optimization, and, and that's got us to where we are today. So it was a really, a really long year of, of back-end projects. For people who don't have experience with that, how much would it, would you be investing in SEO and, and how much into CRO in that year? Oh, we, we were spending about $6,000 a month on just on SEO. Just on SEO? Yeah. US or Aussie? Uh, that's Aussie. Aussie. Yep. So you spent about seventy grand just in SEO. Yep. Right, so when you look at 2000 and the, the previous year, you did $1.5 million with no SEO no investment SEO. And, and you had 170 profit. Last year, you had, your revenue was up slightly, about seventy grand, but your net profit was a hundred. So there's a seventy thousand dollar difference in those two years in profit, but you put seventy of it, six grand a month, straight into SEO. So there's seventy grand right there. And then we also had someone managing our ads that whole year for six thousand, uh, seven thousand Australian dollars a month. Wow! In that in which yep. year? The, the, the last year. And the, okay, and you, now you don't have that expense. No. You do it's it yourself. Yep. So that's another seventy thousand dollars. Now the foundations have been put in place. It doesn't require someone to manage it full time. And if somebody coming in, would you train them on how to manage the ads? Yeah. Okay. So yep. that, and you feel confident that somebody could learn yep. that. Okay. So, so if you add back the seventy thousand in 
uh, ad management and the 70,000 in SEO, you're adding back 140,000. Mm -hmm. So that 140 really comes to 240. Yep. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Um, so that's helpful to know. And so this year you've ripped those expenses out because you're doing your own ad management and you're no longer doing SEO. I, I mean, I've spoken to quite a few people. I don't know about, I mean, Eric, you, you're probably a better place. You've got a $100 million a year e-commerce business. How much do you invest in SEO? Because people I've spoken to have fairly routinely told me that SEO is not what it used to be and that if you are running traffic on across Meta and Google, Google's going to find you anyway. That's what I've been told. Yeah, not heavily. We're, we're honestly 90% ads traffic. focused. Yeah, like, it's paid traffic first. Yeah, it's paid traffic. If you can't make your business work with paid traffic, you don't have a business. That's, that's what my, you know, my business partner and ads guy tells me all the time, you yeah. know? So, um, January, February, right? 2024. Could I assume that those would be slower sales months since it's after Christmas or what, what's kind of the sales Historically, cycle? Historically, what has it been? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. Has it well, been? Uh, last year it was good because we, we, we were spending a lot on ads. Um, so it can be, it can be right. It t traditionally the, the first week or two of January is slow. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a slower month. February, February, we start to ramp up February, March. I would think, I think because it's a business, right? Like a business is like New Year. They're getting motivated. They want to refresh. Mm. I could imagine February, January, February might be all right. It's also... Is there a cyclical thing? Yeah, is there business? a cycle? Yeah. It's also the middle of winter in, in America as well, in North America. So that, that seems to be a little bit slow. It's cyclical. Uh, not really. It's, it's pretty even throughout the year. Obviously, November, December it ramps up a lot, um, but but we have good traffic all the way through. Your Black Friday, I know you mentioned Black Friday a couple of times. What's the percentage of sales that you would do during a Black? And, and is it Black Friday just a couple of days, or do you run it for a week? Oh, do you run it for two? Every year, it seems to get earlier and earlier. I think we started in in October this year. Yeah, we we had planned to go mid mid November, but all our competitors went early, so we had to pull trigger. And how many sales would you make uh, during Black Friday? Um, Black Friday is typically about forty percent more. For that month, but but what we find is that the AOV drops because all the deal hunters come out. Correct. Average order value drops, and they're not as profitable sales. In no, those no, no, and it's a lot more work for for not a lot more. But you can really. you can build your list though, right? So yep, at that that's time, what we do. Yep. And so you, mm -hmm. one of the assets yep. with this business, we might touch on that is the database. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how big is your email list? About twenty six thousand. Wow, yeah. that's just people filling out forms. Filling out forms and, and customers. Yeah, I suppose so, right? Because yeah. like, you said you did 1,800 orders last yep. month. You would have had five times the amount of that as inquiries. So yep. you had 10,000 inquiries last year for 2,000 orders, just in round numbers. That's so, pretty amazing and, to and me. And also, just with that email marketing, if I've read the, the brief, right, you actually had someone managing your email we, marketing. We do currently, yeah. yeah that's in your expenses now? Yeah, yeah, so that's another, you know, with the advent of AI and, and whatnot, that's another, um, you know, percent we could pull how, some How much do you pay for oh, It's not a lot, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. It's about 400 bucks a month. Oh, right, gotcha. And they do EDMs? They, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Electronic yeah. digital yeah. mail, yeah. right? So yeah. how often do they do that? Um, about <laughs> too much, in my opinion, and, and during November, December, it's about three a week. Um, but right oh. now it's about what, about one every 10 days. Okay. Yeah. I might but, want their details because yeah. we don't do any ADMs. I'm so lazy. Yeah. If they're good, can you? Yeah, they're really good. I'd like yeah. to know who they are. Yeah. And sure. how's your conversion on ADMs? Um, again, it's an attribution. So it, it, it's something, something you need to work on, something you need to trust. But they'll claim that they sold that sign. So does Google, so does Facebook. So it's really hard to pull it apart and actually find out you know, a lot of customers are going to buy anyway. They've already made up their mind they're going to buy, but an, uh, an email comes through, so they click on it to have a look. Well, it's first touch, right? So if it yeah, came so through Google, Google's going to tag that, right? That's right. So it's, uh, but but I think without it, I don't think you can run the business without email marketing. Everyone else does it, so so yeah. So is there any way you can track your EDM, like a coupon or a, a, is there some way of tracking? Yeah, you, you could use a coupon. You right. could use a coupon, but what we try to do is not, not discount our product. We're trying to, to, to promote the, the quality of it. So I try not to discount. Uh, a lot of these other competitors will have a full-time discount running all year round. Yeah. Um, and I try not to do that. You can just drive them to another page, make a duplicate page with a yep. forward slash uh, yep. email offer and it's a mirror of that and then you know because they're buying directly through that web form. The email company has their back end as well. So they, they <laughs> so have a database, a dashboard where you can see what, what how many clicks each email's had, etc. cetera. Are you going to be providing in the data room um, this sort of data around the, the ad accounts as well? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep. because that's, I think for, for people listening, you know, you really want to learn to go in and really look at the P&L, like look at where the money's coming at, from and look at where the money's going out, right? And, and really satisfy yourself with this. Uh, and, and look, Richard's here because we believe he's an honest guy. We've actually put him through 
uh, a, a bit of a process to get to here, and James has spent hours with him already. We're, we're, um, you know, so going into that P and L, really understanding where the money's coming, where it's going, and then going through the ad data as well, and really looking at you know uh, historically what's going on there, um, because there are and understanding what things are that you can change because. Uh, the, the things you can change are creative, you know, like the site's fantastic, um, but the actual creative that leads you in there, you might be able to improve the, the process of quoting, like the speed that you mm -hmm. get back to people, the experience, that's a real purple cow opportunity, I think. Um, so, but, but really get into those numbers, which James will make available yeah, to you. And also just on that, I mean, I dare say, comparing year on year, you know, the, the 23, 24 year, um, you said you're heavily invested in SEO and other forms of marketing. So it would be fair to say that you probably la uh, slacked off on the, the actual Google ad spend and they've increased the ad spend back. So it's good to see year on year what you spend and the actual correlation between spend and, and, uh, and sales as well. So. so what we've got here, guys, is basically a situation where we've got a vendor in the last 12 months has invested into the business, the profit dropped back to 100 grand on, um, on a trading income of 1.6 million. What I, uh, but, but then uh, we've demonstrated the, the ad back and, and now we're on sort of track for about 15 grand a month in these early runnings, mm -hmm. which if you times that out by 12 is 180, 1,000 profit. Um, but what I like about this is that it's not um, super scary because you don't have a shitload of money tied up in inventory, um, which is a big plus. Like if 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 you're holding a hundred, two hundred thousand, like we have at, at Dry Flush, a couple of hundred grand's worth of inventory. Mark with Amazon has, I think, a million dollars of inventory sitting in the warehouse. I'm talking wholesale cost. Mm. I've got about maybe four hundred thousand of yeah, retail cost. Six, seven hundred. Six or seven hundred inventory. You've got zero in inventory. Yeah, which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, the other business we've we've acquired, we're holding 1.5 million in, in inventory. So, how much are you holding in inventory? Uh, I don't <laughs> want to discuss that. <laughs> it's called telephone numbers. <laughs> Tens of millions. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking about inventory and um, stock, what's your relationship like with the manufacturer? We have been with them since day one, um, and they've been fantastic. So, I actually about uh, 18 months ago, I I decided to explore other. Um, manufacturers just to see if we could differentiate the product a little bit or, or maybe get the prices down and I kind of I let, I let the main manufacturer know that I was doing that so we sort of played them off against each other a little bit um, quality was very good from both and then when we decided to wind back the spend and, and try and get everything streamlined I decided to stick with the loyalty with the with the original manufacturer um, but from then from that I mean I showed loyalty to her you know the law to us so that's how it's how it works with the chinese manufacturer and and so yeah I've, I've got full trust in them being um being rock solid going forward now so just people understand obviously it's a drop ship model so how do they get paid and when do they get paid so we will send them orders daily mm -hmm. um and they invoice us every two weeks so we make a sale on shopify we get paid the next day from shopify and we don't have to pay for that sign for, for two weeks interesting that's great yeah um James, do you have any more questions? Not in the immediate term. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I think one of the things for listeners, um, when I was younger, I was always the guy that wanted to start businesses, and I still do start businesses uh, quite a lot. But I, but, but I'm that's kind of my superpower, and not a lot of people have that superpower. It is a lot of work starting businesses, and I genuinely was thinking about buying this for Josh. Um, because I know, like, I'm just transferring IP right now to the guy who bought the rights in New Zealand to Dry Flush, another Kiwi. And I, as I'm doing it, and I'm giving him access to all the photo archives and, uh, you know, setting him up and the website, that we've, we've, that $23,000 website we just signed up for, he gets the, a copy of that for free. He started signing all the IP and the plumbing and, the, you know, that, that runs the business you far out, like you forget, like it's like having a baby, you, you forget how much work they are at the start. And you're probably now realizing have, with James having gone through yep. this process, how much work has gone, like there's hundreds of hours in this stuff and there's product market fit. Now when you're buying a business, the thing that you gotta understand is if you start a business, um, you look at this first year here, you made $67,000. I'm guessing 
that this business conservatively is probably going to make 150 this year if I was just taking a conservative view, right? Based but on that's, that's all things being equal not, and not increasing ad spend. So correct. Right. I'm just being conservative. Yeah. All things being equal, if you didn't do anything, you weren't any better, but I'm just saying worst case. There's $100,000 disparity between year one and where you are today. If you take a year, that's $100,000. It's not in your pocket. That would be in your pocket, right? And and by way of numbers, like I was saying to the guys, you know, what ballpark are we talking here? Because we have to give some kind of number because we don't, as much as we love our fans out there in unemployable world, you do need money to buy business. It's not free, right? And so this business, I think, is going to circa somewhere around 250 give or take, depending on the terms and the deal. It could be more depending on um, how many interested parties there are and what the terms are. And it might be at 250 or slightly under depending on what the terms are and who the buyer is. So, but you think about that, you go, well, you know, if you can walk into a business that's making 150 from day one without you improving too much, uh, and, and that's actually, you know, going back to even less than you were doing before you made the investments in the things, uh, it only takes two years before, you, less than two year payback period, but with much less risk. So on a risk adjusted basis, I really like looking at businesses like this, especially if you're using some debt to get into it because you can use the bank's money and the cash flow of the business to acquire something at a fairly low risk. And I honestly think for a lot of people, it's actually a better way to get started in a business for a lot of people, personally. What I love about it is you know, the owner of the business is only working a couple hours a week at the moment, you know, so it's not like you're sitting here going, yeah, I, I'm also working 40 hours a week on this business. Mm. Now, if somebody buys this business and puts in 40 hours a week, and is you obsessed. know, and is obsessed with it, like you were probably when you first bought Definitely. it, then what's going to happen, you know, so. Correct. You can spend your day outreaching to influencers and yeah. becoming a psycho about your ads and studying the brand. This is what I would be doing. I'd be, if I bought this for Josh, I'd say, watch because you can go now to tools that they've been out for ages where you can see all of the ads that High Smile is running uh, on socials and you just watch and learn and become obsessed. And it's not expensive, it's just creative, right? And it's work. And if you and if you do the work and you get obsessed and say, I'm gonna be the number one neon sign, but that's the kind of energy you wanna bring to this and then just smash it and then do what you did. Like, look what you did in year one, from 250 grand to 1.5 million because you were excited. Yep. And, um, that's it. that's yeah. all it takes. And you should be excited if, you, if you're if going into a new venture like that. I think it, it comes hand in hand. How do you foresee like the handover? Like I know if it was me, I'd want to know how, how much I can get from you support. Again, this comes down to terms. Like if somebody goes, all right, I'll give you this low ball offer. You go, okay, well, here's the keys. I'll take the cash. See you later. Whereas if you want you to be there, I mean, obviously, you know, what would, what would you foresee as like, the handover it's it's been a labor of love it's been my my sole focus for the last two years um, so you want to see outside it of family and, and this sort of thing of course i want to see it succeed yeah I, I don't want to hand it over to someone to, to watch them drive it into the ground it's uh, i'm not built like that so it's there's definitely going to be whatever it takes as a handover period i i mean it what is it uh, phone calls it's it's zooms whatever it may be i'm you know how would you how would you describe your ideal buyer because i know myself with everything i touch i I don't want it to, to fail. I want the person mm. or the people I'm in business with to win because that's my track record. So how would you describe the right person for you that you would walk away going, I feel really good about this. Are they, is it a married couple, the singles, what, a young, old, what, what um, it ideal? Could, it could be any mix of that, but it, the person needs to be motivated a little bit tech savvy or if they're not tech savvy, they need to know who to contact to, to get help. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not um, experts at everything we do. Um, that's what agencies and whatnot are for, but it needs to be someone who, who is a little bit tech savvy and who has um, just drive really. I mean, I didn't I didn't wake up that morning and go, I want to buy a neon sign business. It, it popped up and it made sense, so I, I adapted and I made it made myself into someone that is good at running a neon sign business. So uh, I think I think it, it appeals to a wide variety of people. Um, but drive is the thing, isn't it? Drive's drive is the thing. But you can't, you can't be like completely clueless too, no. right? You've got to have no. a little bit of nous about online marketing and a sense of direct response and, and things like yeah. that. And you've got, to, you've got to be careful with who you're spending your money and, and uh, you, you need a little bit of nous about it. You need to have, understand profit and loss and those yep. things. 
because we don't want to see anybody get hurt here, right? We want to make sure the person coming in, that's what I was the same with dry flush. I had 23 applications and I went with a guy that already was doing 3 million bucks a year online mm. in New Zealand because I knew that he knew what to do and he'd been down the road. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be exactly what you need, but we want to make sure that the person coming in has got a, is a bit cluey, like you're hungry. I can see that you're hungry. You're, a, you're doing property developments. You've got multiple businesses going. That's... We want someone like that. Yeah, really. part of the process um, for those who, and I'm sure you're going to run through it at the moment, is when they do um, put in, uh, you know, uh, potentially qualified um, buyers, um, is that we will be profiling them uh, and, and weeding out people we don't think it's a good fit for. So if you haven't got the skill set that, um, that Richard's talking about, it's probably best you don't um, inquire because, we, um, as I said, we'll run through a process. We want to make sure... We want somebody who can come grab this and double it and come back in the pod in totally, a year totally. and say, I bought that business off Richard and then we want to unpack how you took it from one, what is it, 1.5 to three. Totally. Right? And that's still smaller than a company, you know, that you mentioned yep. in Australia. That's what we want and I think that's what you want as well. Yeah, definitely. And, and yeah. so Richard can say, hey, see that business? That, that I started that. <laughs> yeah, I want to be proud of the person that takes us over. Yeah, yeah. I had that when I went to mm. Pack Fair last week and I saw the guys at Goldie Caravans displaying at Pacific Fair and see people, people walking. They sold three vans on the weekend at the Gold Coast show. I was like, I'm proud of that and I want them to win. And that's what we want here. Mm, 100%. Yeah. So the process, guys, um, for those of you, is there anything else you want to cover? No, um, other than the fact that as we'll run through at the I've moment. I've got one more thing I want to cover. Sure. If that's right. I want to know what the risks are from your point of view. Yeah, so, I've got a couple of questions. You've got that. a few questions. I want, I want to know what, where would you be paying most attention on the risk side of this? Because bi all businesses have got risk, right? Like in this business, it's competition. This is a super... Creating content, hardest business in the world because anybody can do it and a click away you could be going watching Elon Musk or three guys on the Gold Coast. So it's hard. So you've got to be super all in. What are the risks in this business? Um, that's, as you say, Adam, I mean, it's not, it's not a massively hard business to enter, but it's hard to do right. Mm -hmm. So I would just be cautious of, um, of letting the standards slip um, and... and I think the foundation's already there. It's just about maintaining them and and um, making sure we've got the right people in place to 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 continue the the, the trend. But um, in terms of in terms of risk, like as we touched on earlier, that there is uh, it is a hard product to differentiate. So um, monitoring the, the competitors and, and and seeing watching what they're doing and watching what new products are coming out, watching trends. So it's staying innovative. Staying innovative. Generally, when there's when there's no differentiation, it becomes price war, right? Yep. So, so the differentiation is service, speed, and then you can innovate yourself too, right? Like if you've got ideas to in innovate in the space, your factory will collaborate with you? Yep, definitely. Yeah. you just got to be genuine, I think. Yeah. Fast, genuine. Fast, genuine, fast. And, and yeah, that's it. All right, so I got a couple. Uh, insurance, liability. So yeah. obviously it's an electrical product, it's coming from China, people are plugging it in. My daughter buys one, it's plugged in her bedroom. How does liability yeah, and insurance Yeah, definitely. The first thing I did was went and got full insurance for um, for America and, and Canada. Um, so we're fully covered for that. Um, I, included in the p and um, Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. It's included in the p &L. So yeah, definitely, definitely recommend. I wouldn't be selling electrical products into America without without some sort of cover. And the same thing if they were to sell in Australia, you would just get you would just get insurance for you, Australia you just as well, whatever Australia. country yeah. you go into. Yeah breakages in your return policy so if i've ordered something and i receive it and it's not 110 percent what i wanted i'm not happy what's the return policy because you've already paid the manufacturer right this is a good thing about this business in the factory so if if you order a sign and it turns up and it's got a scratch on it or it's broken or it doesn't work the factory without any question will replace it no cost to us wow really yeah. Yeah, and I've had them up to um, three months old. Like a customer might receive it and put it in the corner, open it three months later, and it's broken. Does we'll, it happen we'll, often? Um, I'd say probably one out of every hundred. It's not so bad. Not often. It's not what, bad. What are your Google reviews like? They're all pretty good. Uh, Four point nine, I think we're at. <laughs> you, can't <laughs> you, can't, pretty good. Yeah. you can't get much better than that. Yeah, and <laughs> bloody Kiwis, we, so humble. Uh, we actually only started uh, our Google review um, page about. Uh, a year ago and I think we we're already at 140. I was wow. going to say, yeah, he's got two reviews, yeah. 4.9. Wow. <laughs> um, they should be on your site. There is there is a uh, link there at the top somewhere. What you want to do with this, because we just went through this, so just a tip for whoever's going to buy this, because we just went through this exact thing with this new agency, really impressed with these guys. 
but put a photo of the person who left the review and the review and it yeah. just it made their smiling face they taught me all through the psychology of that so if it's not on there if it's just got the stars and the average number also find somewhere to put those quotes with their face yeah. and the stars under it it just builds massive trust reviews are, are something that gets me out of bed like some of these reviews we get it's that's so good americans like to like to leave a detailed review so um, yeah see that but, at the top but, yeah. you can see it Equally, when I get a bad review, I would actually make that bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're we're, we're making yeah. that. It's such a yeah. killer thing. Our dry flush. I'm proud to say, touch wood, we are 100 percent five star. Wow, reviews. well done. Boom. But you know the secret to that? It's phone call. Yep. Yeah. Every, within Building like I, I said to Kevy when when he took over, the number one thing is you call that customer as quickly as you can after the transaction. Yeah. And it, you read my reviews, and there's so many of them are saying, I just couldn't believe it. I bought this thing, and within three minutes. The owner of the company was on the phone to me, thanking me well, for the business. And it, it just, bang, it just works. But that's the beauty with a high ticket item, right? If you're selling, you know, items at 50 bucks and you're not making five sales a day and you're making 500, it's going to be a lot harder to contact 500 people, right? Just, AI. Yeah, correct. AI, AI. AI. There's one, one question there about the, the transaction for potential, the people who are potentially interested in it is always with a, a transaction is transferability. Now, I know you've got two guys in the Philippines. You've got a whole, but you've got a whole tech stack here mm -hmm. from you know, clicks funnels and uh, clicks and whatever it is you had in here. Um, SOPs, is there a pretty uh, robust um, uh, operating model in here? Yeah, there is actually. It's, it's, um, it's not, admittedly, it's not up to date. It's, it's what came with the business when I bought it, um, but it, it will be updated by the time we hand over for sure. SOP stands for Standard Operating, Operating Procedure. Procedure. Yep. Yeah. So Loom is really good for that. These totally. days. We, use, we use Loom and we use um, uh, a software that's that is specifically, specifically for, that. for, for There's some SOPs. great softwares actually on AI now, yes. where there's AI tools specifically on creating SOPs. So, People, it can't be that mm. complex. I no, mean, it's, 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 it's only a. You know, it's, it's, again, you've got two people in the Philippines running it. If you were to scale, you'd be potentially a third and a fourth, and you'd be tapping out at your doubling your rev. Yep. So, um, yep, and it's very easy to, to, um, to just point them to a website and say, this is how we do it. Um, I think we should mention as well, because obviously we're referring to the website quite a bit in this pod, that anyone listening on, you know, Spotify or Apple podcast to check out the video on YouTube because we are referring to the website quite a bit. Yeah. And obviously anyone looking at it will go to the website. But, but go, uh, go to the website, down. which is myneonstore.com, myneonstore.com. And if you want to see the Instagram, right at the bottom of the homepage, there is the social icons. Click on the Instagram one and it'll give you a really good um, overview of the product. And what I love about this format, guys, like this isn't done normally with selling a business. <laughs> Ever ever right and if you are if you've got a great business i'm just going to put this in here now if you've got a great business and you're prepared to be as transparent as richard is being here that you're trying to sell um hit us up actually send an email to james yeah and so for this specific offer for people that are looking to purchase a deal it'll be deals at deals at and yep. if you got a business that you are looking to put up potentially put on the pod in this format and we'll do a, a full professional breakdown of it it'll be um, businesses at or just business at uh, business at business at uh, unemployable.com.au that's what you want business at all right cool so we'll set those up so business at if you uh, have a business you want to sell like this and if you uh, uh, want to inquire it's deals at um, all right cool so uh, do that because we, we, we want to play with this a little bit because unemployables why is to help people uh, you know do well in business right and um, and I think this is a really interesting model that we're trialing here because this for many people is a really great way to get into business. This, I, I, the, the thing I love about this business, I just wanna uh, echo what you said, Eric, and what you've said, is this is a fairly simple business. It's not super complex. It's not super expensive, if I'm honest. Like a lot of people who are just starting in life go, oh my God, in that circus, way out of my range. But for a lot of people, who've got a little bit of equity in their house and, and they're just like, I wanna get into business. There's actually quite a low risk way of getting into business. Even if you didn't do anything and, and you just did last year's sales and didn't, you just hang on to it for a few years and you're gonna get your money back. So it's actually quite a low risk way because it's got a proven product market fit. So Unemployable is all about that. We wanna shine a light on ways for people to create agency over their life. and. And I think this is a really cool way of doing it rather than getting a PDS from a crusty business broker. You Bob, know, Bob and, the crusty broker. Yeah, Bob the crusty broker, <laughs> who's not really an entrepreneur himself. Here you can actually tune in, meet the dude or the girl behind the business, 
you can get a sense of who they are, get the cut of their jib, so to speak. Is this person a bullshit artist or not? I distinctly don't get that vibe from you, Richard, which is why I wanted you on here. Um, if you did, would you actually no, I just tell them you're a bullshitter? Or yeah, I, would, I mean, it's on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Live? <man>. Like, <laughs> well, no, look, I you know, know what you mean, honestly. But you know what I mean, right? Like, jokes yeah. aside, it's like um, we, we think there's something here with helping people um, do it because there's a stat actually James told me that in the US do you want to share that stat yeah, it's so mind blowing to me essentially look there's a big wealth shift coming as we know the boomers are retiring um, but 80% of businesses that are listed on broker sites don't sell so that means only 20% that do and that's listed businesses um, and reason being um, you know brokers are going to hate us for this but this is the whole point of this pod is that they give them a bullshit story they give them a multiple on their profit that's not realistic they stick them up for twenty dollars to $30,000 marketing package knowing full well they're not going to sell the business they get disgruntled when their buyers come along and offer them a realistic valuation so I just want to clean up that clean up that uh, sector altogether and have a, a proper breakdown with a with a, a seller and then talk to in real terms with buyers uh, and and mat, try and mat, mat, uh, you know and fill you, that chasm and maybe you can talk about um, James that concept of terms and price yeah because so, you know that's the thing with Richard that we've talked about Richard's a realistic vendor he wants to help yeah. somebody buy this if they're the right person totally um, Tell and it. it comes down to deals and uh, terms and price. And it, it, everything like this is a willing buyer, willing seller, and you've got to meet a, at a place that Absolutely. Works. So if you look at, most people understand real estate. Let's say you put a contract on a property for a million bucks, it's going to get a 90-day settlement. That's as pretty much as, as vanilla as it gets. Yes, there's some creative structures you can do with options and deferred settlements and whatnot. When you talk about businesses, there's certain implied terms that will come with, potentially, uh, uh, with the business, like maybe a seller note, aka vendor finance. Uh, maybe there's um, a staggered payment you know, in tranche maybe there's an earn out maybe there's um, there's a whole raft of different terms um, to um, you know the, the, the seller always wants the price and the buyer wants the terms somewhere in the middle is a deal so when people um, do uh, register deals at and we go through and vet them what Richard and I have agreed to do is host a uh, event online uh, and go through the, the the financials, go through that marketing breakdown, go through the ad spend, and have what we'll call a due diligence session. Uh, and we're going to pull the business apart properly. Ask questions. Well, so you get you the, the chance live, real time on a, on a Zoom call to pull this business apart, have the the owner himself answer it, uh, and poke holes as much as you can through it. And then we'll get to the point into the stick and go, well, great, Richard, we've got five you know real buyers here. Uh, you know, let's put together an offer that Richard may accept or not, and who have the, has the best deal structure uh will win the will win the deal so it's going to be a bit of fun actually um when we get past um this part of the the, the process which is just exposing and under and explaining what the business is to where the interest um, comes on board to then when we go through it uh and then get to that part of uh, you know an nda and then potentially a letter of in, uh, intent and loi and then moving through the sale process so it's yeah. going to be a bit and, of fun and, and to be clear you know, you do need to demonstrate that you have equity. You absolutely. Know, you can't be, uh, you know, absolutely strap broke and do this. Not that, That's not buying business. So, no. you know, you got to show that you've got some equity and some skill, you know, before Richard's going to entertain, or we're going to entertain somebody, you know, feasibly it, here, you know, because this is not normal for the, the, the vendor to come and do this. So that's sort of going to be the process. It's, uh, it's it, We're, we're going to accept um, applications up until Friday, the 29th of March, 2024, you're going to send an email to start the process to deals with an S, so deals at unemployable.com.au. It's going to go, James, he'll take you through the process from there. It's not going to be overly complicated. We'll give you access to the data room, just simply means all the documents. And then they're going to do a webinar where you can ask questions and whatever. And then from there, those of you who are interested, you'll put your best foot forward and jump on a call with James and... and uh, and Richard and see if you can, uh, Richard will pick the guys that he, or girls that he wants to talk to, have a meet, see if you can find some common ground and a way to get, get a deal done and good luck. And then hopefully come back in a year and tell us how you doubled the business. Did you have a question? Not a question. I was going to make a comment, but. And one, sure other thing, one other thing, one other thing. You know, leave it. We, we're leave about, it out, man. To, to uh, the the linen shirt. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't about the linen. I was just going to say for all the business brokers out there that love James' comments, his address is <laughs> <laughs> Bob. I've got, I've got nine Bobs coming around tonight. <laughs> and if you, look, and if you're looking at doing this, you know, we are about to, and, and I will put in a plug here for us. We are about to open up our coaching program again. We only open it up four times a year, something like that. We opened it up late last year. We're going to do our first intake this year. And if you want help growing this business, if you acquire it, you can always join that coaching program. You can have Eric 
and me and James and access to the other five coaches on our panel to coach you one-on-one -on, -one on scaling this business. You'll have access to our ads, guys, if you don't want to do it yourself when you first take over. Uh, you'll have access to our whole network and you'll be on a weekly coaching call with us every Sunday. We do a live call with our clients from around the world. Then we have one-on-one -on -one access coaching. We do live events as well just for our students. So uh, keep an eye on that as well. But you could you tack on a little bit extra to your sale price and hire us as your panel of coaches in the first year. It's a tax deductible way of growing the business and getting help. You know, it's interesting. I was actually on a coaching call with, with uh, one of our clients yesterday. And I mentioned that we're about to do a pod, you know, about a business for sale. And he started peppering me like, oh, what is it? When's it, when's it airing? What? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> you could just tell, he just, like, uh, you know. There's definitely going to be interest in this. Oh, I, I have no doubt yeah. there's going to be interest in this and I'll be really fascinated. So if you're sitting there and you're interested, um, take the first step. Send JD a, a message. Yeah. So if you're looking to uh, get, get, uh, access the data room here for myneonstore.com, it's deals at unemployable.com.au, D-E-A-L-S. But also uh, for those people who are interested and maybe want to go through the process that Richard just gone through, which is a, a fairly lumpy deep dive into his business uh, and want the chance to potentially be on the pod here uh, and uh, have a deal breakdown like this or um, on the, the soon to be deal flow podcast, that's business at unemployable.com.au. There it is, guys. Thank you for watching. Big thank you to our sponsor, Early Bird AI. Remember, get yourself booked in for that uh, AI order as well. You included, Richard. Get your team onto that, mate. Let's let's that crank it up. Like I should have known about it a few months back. <laughs> mate, exactly. Well, we maybe leave that uh, bread on the table for the next buyer. But mate, again, we really do appreciate you coming across the Tasman to see us today, and for being willing to be our guinea pig to see what interest there is out there among the tens of thousands of people that are going to listen to this podcast this week. Um, I'm really stoked on that, right? We're getting yeah. like 30,000 views on YouTube per week of each new episode and then many more on Spotify, Apple and through the audio version. So, um, yeah, I'm really interested to see the feedback and how it goes and um, appreciate you coming over. Thanks for it having me. It does look a bit like Chris Hemsworth, doesn't it? Oh. Hey? Jesus Christ. You got a crush. Just, you got a crush. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> are, are, are you wearing shorts? <laughs> no, thank you very much for yeah, coming. Yeah, appreciate Thanks, it, mate. It's yeah. been a yeah, good yeah. process. It's been awesome. And it's been nice meeting you, man. Like, you got a good vibe and you got a, you've done a good thing here and, and I wish you every success with the sale and every success with the new business that you've Thanks, just man. bought appreciate and that. passing this on to somebody else to grow it up. So thanks for watching, guys. Most of all, we appreciate you at home. Please drop a comment below. Let us know what you thought of this pod. Do you want more content like this? Um, what did you think? Let us know. Share. Sharing is caring. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Unemployable. If you'd like to watch another episode, just click there.